It is true that no man can pluck us out of the hand of Jesus, nor out of the hand of God, who is greater <coughs> than all. And it is true that the Lord is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. And it is true that we are kept by the power of God through faith and our salvation is ready to be revealed and have even been predestinated to be conformed to the image of God's Son. And that we are in fact being changed from one increasing stage of glory to another by the Spirit of God. That life is still described as a fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So safety does not mean idleness. A guarantee from God does not mean the absence of a quest. We're not in heaven yet. And we have, we're, we're engaged in a warfare, weapons of our, not Christ's warfare. Christ isn't involved in a war, and he never was. A lot of gospel songs picture Jesus as fighting the devil in a war, you know. But Jesus is not in a war, and he never was in a war. He was superior to the foe in his most humble state. He was superior to the foe. And the foe knew it. Men didn't know it, but the foe, the foe knew it very well. We are described as running a race. Now, some people can't correlate this with being kept by the power of God, be predestinated under the option of son, sons and so forth. They can't correlate these two, but they've got to be correlated in your mind. You've got to see these. We're running a race to glory. We're wrestling against principalities and powers that have already been plundered, but plundered principalities and powers are still very potent for us. Amen. And we're still charged with resisting the devil and keeping ourselves in the love of God to all that's necessary. I, I know that this is not generally known in the, uh, in the church world. There's sort of a stupidity that reigns in Christendom. It oversimplifies everything and it presents what they call the Christian life as though you are in an armored car, just going on your way with luxuries inside and no difficulty. But that's not the case at all. <clears throat> God's, in fact, God's not glorified with that kind of situation. Right. Yeah. Now, I want to uh, say a few words about the concept of light. Sister June did an excellent job in presenting that, enlarging the idea of light. That was very, very excellent. In a nutshell, light, in the kingdom of God particularly, is what makes manifest, or what makes known, or what makes you aware of, of it. John 3.21 says, He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. That's quite a statement there that Jesus made that, the person who's doing the truth comes to God so he can see that God's really is the is the principal worker. <laughs> it's quite a quite a statement. And then we're reminded in first first Corinthians four five, light manifests this point here. Judge nothing before the time. No, not time yet to determine who's going where. <laughs> this is not it is premature. Until the Lord come, who both will bring to light 
hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart that, and then shall every man in Christ have praise of God. Amen. So this is going to happen, this is going to happen that when you step into the full orbed light of God, all your thoughts are going to be known by everybody. You're going to make manifest the counsels of the heart, how you thought. <laughs> oh, that's going to be some revelation. The counsels of the heart, how, what motivated you? Why did you think the way you did? Well, now you may, men may present a case for how they think, but see, the, the case is going to be presented when we're in the light. God's going to make manifest the counsels of the heart, what motivated people, why they planned what the way they did, why they lived the way they did. It's going to be made known. Light manifests. <coughs> this means that illumination is a critical factor in overcoming the devil. Stupid, I hate to use the word stupid, but it's just, it's just a sharp word. It's got a point on it, and it's something you have to use. It. Stupid people do not overcome the devil. Right. It says, be re let's be right clear about this. Simpletons yeah. do not overcome the devil. Yeah. Amen. It, there's a lot of these kind of people that exist. I understand that there may be some people who have been deprived of rational powers, and we're not talking about those kind of people. We're talking about people who are spiritually ignorant. They don't either na know the nature of the battle. They don't know where this thing is headed. They don't know what the purpose of God is. They don't know how potent Satan is. Now, these people cannot overcome the devil. It's impossible. That being the case, that explains a lot of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. That explains why some people stumble through life, just stumbling and falling and making blunders and mistakes. Mm -hmm. and why? Because they don't understand. Yeah. They don't have light yeah. or illumination. There's nothing in them that manifests what's around them. See, if you've got light in you, it'll manifest what's around you. To you, I mean, to you it'll do it. It'll manifest what's around you. I want to look at this a little more closely. We're, ch we're called to be children of light. Jesus said in John 12, 36, while you have the light, well, so that, that, that changes how, while you have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of the light. <laughs> How long are you going to have the light? I, we don't know. While you have the light, believe in the light. Trust in it, depend upon it. Now this is, of course, a, a reflected light. God is light, as the scriptures state. And Jesus is the light of the world. So the light that we're talking about, that we possess, is a reflected light, like the light that reflected off Moses' face. It's a reflected light. It's not independent light. Not at all. It's, it's strictly harmonious with God and his nature. It fits very well with who God is. It's God's light that you're reflected. Children of light is children of God's light is what it is. Now, through saints, the doctrine is confirmed in the lives of the saints. I want to uh, draw attention to this. It's reflected in the lives of the saints. Ye are all children of light, and as the children of the day, we're not of the night nor of darkness, and we're going to show that how you live that's the light. That's the light we're talking about. 
It's a reflected light. So that God's manner yeah. is reflected in your life. Mm -hmm. What you say, mm -hmm. what you do. See? Marvelous to see this. It said of Jesus, in him was life, and the life was the light. Mm -hmm. His life was the light mm -hmm. of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So we had to have an interpreter. Well, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came to bear witness, see, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light, which light is every man that cometh into the world. So whatever light you've got, legitimate, whatever legitimate light you have is a reflection of Christ's light, who is the what God did, God is light, but it's too, it's too big. God is, as light is in God, it's too big for man to participate in it. So God localized his light in Christ, the man Christ Jesus, so that it was, a, in fact, accessible to us. So that's what that meant. That's how it could flow through us, is that he, he didn't diminish it, he localized it. There's a, there's a, difference, there's a difference. It didn't, the light didn't lose its luster, it was just localized in Christ. So as much as you see of Christ, that's just how much light you have. Amen. If a person doesn't understand much about Jesus, they don't have much light. And it's foolish to say, you're the light of the world. You know, We should all shine like lights. God has sent us to be the light of the world. Shine his light. If you don't know much about Jesus, you can't shine. Because your light's a borrowed light. It's not intellectual light. It's a light received from Christ. Those in Christ have been called into an environment of light. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who calls you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now he brought, in other words, he brought you into a place where Jesus was is made known. The light's localized in Jesus. Jesus is enthroned in heavenly places. So for you to get the light, you've got to get where where Jesus is. And faith, of course, does this. Faith can transport you where Jesus is, so that the light he has, which is the only legitimate light. It's the only illumination, it's the only manifestation, it's the only area of understanding that God honors. But to get it, you've got to get where Jesus is. Amen. That's what God did. He put us in an environment of light. Now, we, our text tells us that we're to put on, this is not a suggestion now, this is something that does have to be done. Romans 13, I'm going to read 11 through 14. And then knowing the time, <laughs> yeah. he said, know the time, he said, yeah. well, how about spiritually, what time is it? Yeah, right. Comes down to the, to the world and how it's progressing, what, what time is it? Knowing the time, that now it's high time to wake out of sleep. Sleep was out of order in this day. Amen. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So the closer you get to it, now the men would reason, the closer you get to it, the more you can relax. That's how men would reason. But this is the case. The closer you get to it, the more alert yeah. Amen. you have to be. Amen. The night's... To awake out of sleep, now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So we've been moving along yeah. toward the full manifestation of the light. So now, now we've got we've had an introductory manifestation of the light, and it's altered us that we participate in the light. It, it comes from us, but it's not the full light yet. We're headed toward the full light. The night's far spent. Yeah, we're closer to the end than we are to the beginning. Yeah. Amen. The day's at hand. Let us therefore cast off work of aggression. 
cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So, so you can't put on the armor of light till you divest yourself of certain things. So the idea of like a carnal Christian or a worldly Christian or these kind of thoughts, these are not valid thoughts. To put on the armor of light, you have to cast off the works of darkness. They won't. Fall, they don't fall off. They don't fall off. I don't want to sense people say this, and I, I think I know what they mean. Is that when you come in the light, things just begin to fall off? But it's, strictly speaking, that's not really what happens. Because all of you is not in the light. There's a part of you that's in Christ that's in the light, but it's, it's a, you've got a couple other parts too. Let's put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. Is in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put on, the, no, I was going to say the same thing another way. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And I want to look, I want to look at this. <clears throat> the armor of light. Armor is a weapon. It has to do with the warfare. So as someone has already mentioned, it's offensive and defensive, both. It's offensive in the sense that it penetrates the enemy camp. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Some versions say expose them. And we're going to show how this is done. It's, so this armor of light, see, it's, it's, it's offensive. We're showing it that it is offensive. There's things that only can be done by the light against the enemy. Only light. Light comes into darkness. Darkness never comes into light. John 1, 5 says, The light shineth in darkness. Jesus as the light shined in darkness. The light of Jesus in which you participate, it shines into the darkness is the idea. Not, not that the light is made to operate in darkness. That's not what he means. He means it shines into the darkness. Because what if you're part of a society that says to neutralize all that and don't say anything to offend anybody and kind of like smile and be non-offensive all the time? What does that do? That contradicts this whole thought of light. Yeah, right. <laughs> our, our job isn't to impress people, to convict people. And once convicted, of course, thank God we have a message. Mm -hmm. Light shines into darkness. Light can invade whether the darkness wants it to or not. Yeah. Yeah. It invades yeah. darkness. As soon as a person who's living with the Lord, walking in the light, mm -hmm. steps into an environment, light begins to shine. Men's deeds are made known. People begin to feel ill at ease, and just a lot of things happen because the light's invading the darkness. Right. If your aim is just to be known as a nice guy, that won't happen. Right. That, of course, is reproach to, reports to God. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't, like, suppress the light when he came in among the religious elite. He didn't, like, suppress it, or shall we say put a bushel over it. He let it shine out, whether it's in the temple, whether it's by the seashore, wherever he was, that light shined out and penetrated the darkness. Now, when he says that the light repro reproves, it means it, it confutes. That is, they can't wiggle out. We go out of it. It exposes and rebukes and reproves. The light does that. 
that some people feel, they'll feel ill at ease about the way they talk when you're around. Yeah. They will. There's some things they won't bring up if you're around. There's some stories they won't tell if you're around. That's right. You always let them know who you are now. You belong to Christ. Just in case they're wondering why you're the way you are, just clarify the matter for them. Give a reason for the hope that's within you. It's marvelous to see this offensive nature of the light. Amen. But it's, de it's defensive, too. See, Satan can't stand the light. He's the prince of darkness. Darkness is his domain. And so he's offended by the light just as surely as you're offended by the darkness. Amen. So when here comes a child of God glowing, you know, their candle's been lit by the Lord and they're glowing, Satan doesn't like this. Sometimes he'll have to leave, like he did Jesus. After, after Jesus shined a lot of light on him there in the wilderness, he just left for a season. He couldn't tolerate the light. Satan can't stand the light. Now, illumination, spiritual illumination, has an approving type ministry. Now, this is on the defensive side. What a person is in Christ approves them. Now, let me give you a passage that talks about this. In 2 Corinthians 6, 4 through 7. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, whew, it's got bad things here. None of these things hurt him. Right? Yeah. He wasn't set back by any of these things. In afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. <laughs> That'd take a lot of people down. All that, all that would take a lot of people down. Yeah. But it doesn't, it, didn't take, it doesn't take the person down who has light. Amen. Light protects them. By pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. That's in the middle of all this opposition. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor, by the armor of righteousness. The armor of righteousness. The armor, yeah. but the breastplate of righteousness, remember. Yeah, yeah. The armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left is protective. Yeah. As you're serving God, you're going, to you're going, frankly, in dangerous territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're being subjected to things that would undo anybody but a child of the light. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's just too much for them. Stripes, imprisonments, tumults, labors, washings, fasting. See, that's, that's more than a human spirit can hold up under. But the light protected him. It was an armor. We have this also seen in the case of Job. His, his, life, his life protected him. All the sons of God appeared before God in order to give account for what they were doing and carrying out their commissions and so forth. And he asked Satan where he'd been. He said, well, I've just been walking to and fro, you know. And he said, well, have you considered my servant Job? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he says, I thought about Job. I, I can't get to him. That's light. Yeah, that's right. That was light. That's why he couldn't get to him. That's how God protected him. He got, the means God uses is light. And if you wonder whether Job had light, you read the book of Job and see what he said. Yeah, that's right. yeah. He had some illumination, and that's what protected him. Right. We're kept by the power of God through faith, but it narrows down to having light. Yeah. Then you remember that after he exerted his influence and took everything he had, after he told God, Job will, Job will deny you if, if, I, if you let me do this. Well, he didn't. And Job came, Satan came back, and God said, well, he holds, his holds fast his integrity. Did you see that, Satan? See, you, you see, he didn't tell him this, but don't think Satan didn't think about this. You said he'd deny me, but instead he held fast his integrity. He was protected by the light. 
<laughs> oh, it's wonderful to see. And it, it stops the mouths of accusers. Light does. So they are ashamed. Here's how Peter put it. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Be ready always. I said be ready always. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks the reason for the hope that is within you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as evildoers, they may be ashamed. They said that they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. That's protected by the light. Protection. Now, an illuminated mind is defensive, protects the person. I trust you haven't forgotten the words of Peter in 1 Peter 4 1. For as much in as Christ has suffered for us in the same in the flesh, arm yourselves. But what do you arm yourselves with? Same mind. That's what's been illuminated. That's where the light, the light has been shined in there. Arm yourselves with the same mind. That means the person who doesn't have the same mind is unarmed. That's right. Right? Satan can get at them. Or Philippians 2, 5, let this mind, an illuminated mind like Jesus had, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. An illuminated mind is a defensive weapon. And you know, you've probably been impressed with the relative fewness of people that have an illuminated mind. They... They can't traffic in the things of God. They, uh, it's hard, too hard for them. They're vulnerable. So Satan go take advantage of them. Arm yourself with the same mind. Now let's look at this armor of light again, because it has to do with our conduct. I said it has to do with our conduct. Amen. Let's go back to our text here, Romans 13. Verse 11, beginning verse 11. Knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night's far spent, the day's at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Well, what do you mean, Paul? Let us walk honestly. Was out of what you do. Let us walk honestly, not in, as in the day, not in rioting, drunkenness, not in chambering, in wantonness, not in strife and envy, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh as armor. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Your works are actually armor. Yeah. Uh -huh. They protect you. Maybe people, you may get the idea, people don't see it this way, but this is Satan's kingdom does. Mm -hmm. They know the Job's. That's right. they, know, they know the Paul's. I mean, the Peters and people like this—they know they know them. Mm -hmm. And your works are a framework. They're like a—they're like a bulwark. Satan can't get past. Yeah. Your works in Christ Jesus, the works of faith, works of righteousness—they they form a barrier. Satan can't get. He has to falsely accuse you. He, he can't—he can't raise a legitimate accusation mm -hmm. against you. All right, let's look at another text that says the same thing, Ephesians 5, 8 through 10. Ye sometimes were darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light for the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. That, that has to do with your expressions. Right. Fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You can see that, can't you, that the, the fruit of the Spirit well, the Spirit does it, you're the one that actually expresses it. it. It is your expression prompted by the Holy Spirit because you're in Christ and are accepted by God. And the Holy Spirit that works as this expression comes out and it forms a, a wall that Satan can't get past. Can't do it. Oh, I wish people saw this. I see people that are they're very 
sloppy in the way they live. They choose wrong companions. They go wrong places. They do wrong things. And they, by doing this, they make themselves vulnerable to Satan. It's like a great big open door to the wicked one. Whereas if you buttress your life by walking in the light and doing works of righteousness, that is the works that result from righteousness, as you begin to do this, it neutralizes Satan's power. Oh, it's marvelous to see. This is the light that is given to those who are alert. Ephesians 5, and what, I'm trying this out with your walk, with, with the manner in which you live, see. Ephesians 5, 14, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, rise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. See, there he goes back. Gets back to the person's works. They're defensive. Don't walk as a foolish person that doesn't know what's going on. Walk as wise. Redeem by every time. Buy up every opportunity. Wherever there's an open door, get into it. Wherever there's a closed door, stay away from it. Redeem the time, and it will protect you. So why will it do that? Because this confirms you've been connected to God. When your works are proper, it's not because you were like a good worker. It's because this confirms you've been joined to the Lord. Amen. And the life of Christ is being manifested in your mortal body. And as it does, it like throws out an offensive odor <laughs> to, to Satan. So he doesn't particularly want to be around you. Now, he may have to go to God and say, I desire to have him for us. There's a symptom of sweet. He may go do this, but he, he's got to ask permission. Amen. Because they can't get, he can't get past mm -hmm. that righteousness that results from being made righteous. See, when you're made righteous, you really do become righteous. Yeah, that's right. And it protects you. See that you walk circumspectly. And not as fools. Put on the armor of light. Now it takes it, put on the armor of light. Throw yourself, throw yourself into godly expressions that are translated into life. See, the life you get from Christ has got to be translated into observable living. You translate it into observable living. It's really the life of Christ. Christ was really righteous. He really did live godly. And when you receive his life, it, it causes in your measure the same thing to happen. And your righteousness will protect you. Well, you've, you've seen it. I know you've experienced it. You've experienced some people curtailing their speech just because they were in your presence. Some things they didn't talk about just because you were there. Right. That was this <laughs> armor that you had. I commit these things to you to, to ponder. We've, we've dealt with a very key thing of the, in the kingdom of God in this preaching festival. But the armor of light, is that just kind of an intriguing Amen. thing to think about? Mm -hmm. So it's not like just a, like a luxury. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's functional. See, in the kingdom of God, everything is functional. It, it actually does something. Right. It has to do with either enabling you to draw closer to God or disabling Satan from getting close to you. That's how it translates out. That's why it's important that you let your light shine. This is why it's important, because then God's glorified. They let your light shine that man may see your good works. See, there it, is. there it is again. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So may you be a good uh, custodian of the light. It's potent. 
It will make impressions where you can't do it by yourself. And it'll protect you in very dangerous circumstances. Brother Aaron will have our exhortation.